if you're watching this you're likely pretty new to grandmaster nightfalls maybe you've run a few here and there in the past maybe you're a pvp main just looking to farm in a dead palindrome or maybe you're a three times conqueror just looking for some new ideas whoever you are i've got you covered this is my first dive into youtube content it's going to be a little bit lengthy i want to make sure we cover everything i can just bear with me i will get you gm ready timestamps are in the description if you need anything in particular and let's get going season of the chosen will be the fourth time we've seen grandmaster nightfalls and this season is looking to be a rough one um, we've got plenty of new gear we are more powerful than ever for sure but this season's strike list may just be the most difficult we've seen since season 10 when gms were first introduced we have three old strikes some of the hardest from season 10. um well, arms they was not that bad but word of nothing probably the hardest gm i've ever seen uh two remastered destiny one strikes and one brand new strike that we haven't even seen yet from what we know about it it has like nine mini bosses it's gonna be a rough one so anyway let's get started with the basics of grandmaster nightfalls if you have run these before you already know the basic rules you can skip ahead if you don't or you need a refresher stick around grandmaster nightfalls are a huge step from master activities you got a minus 25 contest modifier so even the red bar ads can take you down in just a couple shots gms use a token revive system you start with four res tokens and every champion you kill will give you one more to a max reserve of 20. you have to revive teammates you cannot self respawn the only exception is strikes with patrol zones if you're in a patrol zone you can self respawn but it will take a token and you will not see that it took a token until you leave the patrol zone it's kind of janky it's weird if your team wipes anywhere in the strike anywhere you will go back to orbit and finally at 45 minutes in you will lose all your rest tokens you cannot revive your teammates anymore that is it you gotta finish it with what you got most strikes will have two out of the three available types of champions with the exception being worn or nothing which will throw all three at you so have fun with that one game rewards just like regular nightfalls are based on champion kills you get the best rewards for killing all the champions typically you'll get a couple of send at shards some prisms an exotic armor piece stuff like that this season also reintroduced some destiny one weapons as nightfall rewards like we mentioned earlier you've got the shadow price auto rifle the palindrome 140 hand cannon and the swarm lmg Grandmasters will be dropping adept versions of these weapons. You can masterwork them to get boost to all stats, not just a masterwork stat. And these weapons can take adept weapon mods. Random adept weapon mods are most likely going to drop at the end of GM completions whenever you get a weapon, similar to the trials chest. If you don't know for sure, they haven't said anything, we'll find out. Um, but anyway, these weapons definitely add a huge incentive to GMs this time around, which is exactly why I put in this video together. So let's get you ready. First things first, you need to prepare. You need to be power level 1325 to even launch a GM strike. The game will lock you out. Ideally, that means 1310 armor base plus 15 in your artifact, or 1309 plus 16, 1308 plus 17. You get the idea. Just hit 1325. The point is, start grinding power now if you really haven't been doing so actively already. And that includes your artifact, which is unfortunately best level up through bounties. I might make a more detailed power grind video. It's a little late in the season for that already. So probably not. But the point is, start doing all your powerfuls and pinnacles every week. Grab and knock out a ton of bounties for everything you do. You will hit 1325 in no time. I also highly, highly, highly recommend you work in all three classes, not just your main. This will allow you to be a lot more flexible with whatever team you're running with and also power level much faster. Every week, knock out your grinding with your least to most played characters in that order to max out your main class. I personally use destinyoptimizer.com to min-max my own grind, and I highly recommend you do the same. I'll put a link in the description. And while you can just grind out your artifact and barely squeak out 1325, mostly ignoring armor, you will be doing less damage if your weapons aren't 1310. Check this out. Seriously, get those pinnacles done and make sure you keep some spare gear for infusion fodder. You're going to want to infuse your good gear. Grandmasters launch on March 16th, so if you want to dive in right away, there's your goal. Hit 1325 by March 16th. If you miss it, there are the strikes around a cycle. There's always a catch-up period where you can run all six strikes at the same time. The first reward is going to be the swarm. 
So if you don't care about the swarm, if you only want your deck pally, you got two weeks to wait. The cycle is swarm to shadow price to palindrome. So plan accordingly. Before we go any further, let me just make a quick note. If your goal is to unlock the conqueror title, it's going to be a little bit trickier this time around. Bungie revamped both conqueror and flawless to account for the new guild title system. And to do that, they added some new triumphs. Most of them are retroactive. You might already have these done. But this one right here, you will need to get this done before any of the Guild of Triumphs unlock. And the Guild of Triumphs for Conqueror are to do all six strikes. So essentially, to get Conqueror as fast as possible, you will need to run Devil's Lair five times on week one with all different subclasses and then one more for a completion. Kind of a pain in the ass. It is what it is. We'll get it done. So let's start by going over the Season's Artifact mods. I'll say right away, I'm not really one to calculate damage. There are other channels you can find the numbers on. I kind of eyeball it and I'm not going to make any crazy claims about the percentages or anything here. First of all, you need to get your champion mods. Overload Bow, into Barrier Scout, and Unstoppable Hand Cannon are going to be your primary options. Unstoppable Pulse is alright, but can be tricky to use in a tight spot. Overload SMG is absolute garbage. Don't even bother with it. Don't even touch it. You will get your team wiped by a single Minotaur or something like that. The next few columns on the artifacts don't really have a whole ton to offer for GM content or PvE in general. There are some nice PvP sniper mods. You might as well pick this up if you play a lot of Crucible. The big one is Sniper Scavenger, a one point scavenger mod. You cannot go wrong with that. It synergizes very well with this guy right here, Anti Barrier Sniper Rifle. Anti Barrier Sniper, you will want to grab this. Unlike the primary option, Anti Barrier Sniper will actually still do damage as you pop the shield. Most snipers only take a few hits to pop on a GM and a single four times honed is Nagi shot should take it right down. Further down the artifact, we have some interesting mods for, for more detailed builds. Disrupting Blade combined with Passive Guard uh, could be a situational setup, but could work for overloads pretty well. It was pretty nice in Season 10. The two stasis mods here, honestly, I didn't really find them very useful. Maybe I'm not doing it right. The Arc Overload Grenades are a must have for Titans and Warlocks. I will not be running Arc Strider in GMs, but Thunder Crash and Chaos Reach are going to be really nice. Inferno Whip, not a bad choice. There are just better options for your artifact. Don't really need to buy it. Volatile Conduction and Focusing Lens, both amazing, synergize very well. You can find tons of clips on that, especially with Thunder Crash right now. Amazing. And finally, Sunder and Gaze, probably the only other one worth looking at here. It can be a little bit tricky to proc it, but it is pretty powerful. I'll see if I can find some more detail for you inside of the description. So you've hit 1325, your artifact is all set. Let's talk about weapons. First off, the staple exotics. Izanagi's is always huge, and with Interbarrier Sniper, it is a must-have. It is a powerhouse. Anarchy is similarly, a DPS monster, hasn't changed at all, and look, looks cleaner than ever with a new ornament. Divinity and Ariana's Vow, both amazing, and both have anti-champion properties. And Xenophage is always just a great damage dealer if all else fails. With a rock above the season, uh, Wardcliff Coil is going to be pretty nice. Worth a try. Instead of the champion mods this season, you can get a little more spicy, but we'll talk about that later on. Regarding legendary weapons, you want to stock up on scouts, bows, and hand cannons. LMGs are a fantastic heavy option as well. Swords can be nice. We'll see. Even with anti, anti barrier Sniper, you don't want your entire team relying on special ammo for champions. You will really want at least one person running a scout rifle. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go too much into detail on weapons and perks. I will just throw out a few of my favorite options here. Use what you like, see what works for you. All right, so let's start with scout rifles. You have some pretty nice options. Night Watch is a classic. If you run the new light quest, you can get the old curated roll of overflow explosive payload. Frankly, there's no better roll for it. For energy weapons, you have a couple nice options. You got Vouch Safe, recently reissued, has some really nice perks. Explosive payload, rapid hit, can't go wrong. Turn on Blazon, Disruption Break, Pop a Shield, do more kinetic damage. Nutty. Uh, trusty from the Raid. Really nice options out there. Really good stuff. You want to get a little more spicy? I unironically want to try running Skyburners on Arms Dealer. It could be fun. Symmetry too. Symmetry might work. Pull that out of your collection. See how it works for you. Give it a go. I will unfortunately say that Dead Man's Tail, the new fun Yeehaw gun that everybody loves, I personally do not think it's going to be that great in GMs. I don't think it's worth using the exotic top for. I think there are going to be better options. Put on Anarchy. Put on Izanagi's. You've got better stuff. It's fun. It's a great weapon, but it's not going to have a place here. You've got a lot of nice options for bows for overload. Um, Explosive Head, really nice overload perk. Lighting Winds can roll that. I love this thing. Uh, Whispering Slab can roll Warper Weapon. 
Can't go wrong there. Arc your redemption. Rampage? Why not? Limo and Arc. Kinda gonna be slept on. The poison will overload champions. You can give this a go. It'd be nice. Tikus and Trinity Ghoul could also be nice if you want to use your exotic slot in a primary. Uh, Tikus in particular will actually proc Wrath of Rasputin if you're using Warmind Cells. Really fun. Otherwise, you have some decent energy options. Here New Heaven from the Raid from Last Wish. Rampage. Sure. Imperial Needle, the new one. Give it a go. Point of the Stag. Verbal Weapon. Get it off the exotic kiosk. Really nice little legacy bow. Works great. Uh, final Leviathan's Breath. You might be thinking could be nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't stack for the overload bow because it already has Unstoppable built in. Which means it's a viable option. It does not a lot of damage. Hand cannons probably have the most variety of options. You've got a ton of great choices. I personally love the seven Seraph Revolver. I am payload. No damage drop off over distance. It's fantastic. Makes war mine cells. Uh, if you want the Osmosis version, could be nice for shields, depending on the strike. I just got this guy today and it carried me through uh Solo Flawless Master Presage. Presage, whatever you want to say. <laughs> True Prophecy, Lord Folks was payload, also a good PvP roll. Works great in both. Amazing. Uh, energy options. There are just too many to list. Igneous Hammer, Palindrome, Waking Vigil, Posterity, Nation of Beasts, Curated, Bottom Dollar, Ancient Gospel. I've already said this. You've got a ton of stuff. Try what you like. Use what you like. Just look for damage and reload perks. That's honestly it. There's not much to go off of. Any hand cannon will get the job done for you. I'm still going to cover Pulse Rifles, even though I don't think they're going to be that great this season. No time to explain. Very good kinetic option if you want to use your exotic for it. Messenger, fantastic kinetic option. Probably a better choice. Uh, for energy, you have Stars and Shadows, Reasonable Pulse, G and 7, Disruption Break, Medical Damage will do more when you pop the shield. Last Perdition can roll Rampage, can roll Outlaw, can roll some fun stuff, pretty good. Third Axiom, I am honestly not too sure what it can roll, I haven't looked into it too much, but it's a nice new pulse, give it a go. If you like pulses, there you go, give them a go. Special options for this season are going to be a little more limited, and by that I mean you're almost always going to be running a Sniper, especially with Anti-Barrier Sniper. Every strike has Anti-Barrier. So Izanagi is obviously the king, but if we look at the, some legendary options, we have Succession, Corporal Weapon, Reconstruction, really nice. I love this guy, my favorite. Eye of Soul can also roll Corporal Weapon. It actually has some really nice PvE perks. Privacy, you can roll Rampage on this guy. Maybe not the best, but Triple Tap. Triple Tap gets the job done. Far Future has some interesting rolls. Maybe you can make it work. Maybe not. I like it. Um, Adored and Frozen Orbit, we're going to go into. These can both roll Triple Tap Vorpal. Definitely grab both of them. Finish the Adored quest if you haven't already. Both really nice. Eichlos can work. Dysentomius can work. Give him a go. See what you think about snipers. Aside from sniper rifles, the only other special weapon you'll probably want to look into getting, if you don't already have one, is a blinding nade's truth teller. Um, a single blinding grenade can shut down an entire room. Fear the room, you're good to go. Salvager Salvo, not really gonna cut it. Not really gonna cut it in GMs. Blinding nade's truth teller, absolutely will. This is looking to be a great season for heavy weapons. Anarchy and Xeno are always great fallbacks if you're not using exotic elsewhere. If you're going to run overload swords, try a caster frame. You can overload from a distance, but also get up close. See what you think. Fortunately, Lament will probably not proc Disrupting Blade. I haven't tested it. I have not tested it, but Lament has built an into barrier. The quest is kind of slept on. If you're running backers on a hunter, this thing is nuts. Otherwise, rocket launchers got a 30% damage buff. Look for like Ambitious Assassin, Cluster Bomb, Lasting Impression. All fantastic perks. Almost every rocket launcher is pretty much the same aside from the element and perks that can roll. They all do the same base damage. Check them out. Finally, let's look at the LMGs. I love the seventh Seraph Saw. This guy can make War Mine cells. It hits pretty hard. It's fun. Memoration can roll Reconstruct to Rampage. It's amazing perks. Warp on Avalanche. Thermal Rosen can have some fun stuff. You've got some nice options. Just cover your elements. As long as you cover your elemental shields, you are good to go. And finally, just to wrap this up, remember these are just my own suggestions from my own experience over the past few seasons. Use whatever weapons work for you. Use what you like. Just build around anti-champion mods. Uh, use damage perks, reload perks, and just know what elemental shields you're facing in, in the strike ahead. Build around that and you will be set. So with the weapons out of the way, let's talk about subclass builds. The little details like grenades and jumps are mostly up to personal preference, but there are some key things to bear in mind. No matter what class you're playing, you want to build around recovery and intellect. And mobility for hunters, but it depends on what you're doing. Ideally, you really do want 100 of each. If you can't hit 100 in each, at least aim for 100 intellect. 
don't even bother with resilience don't bother with other mods just recovery and like mods stack those up for armor mods you of course want your artifact mods slotted in all your champion mods war mine mods are fantastic wrath of the war mind especially on the solar subclass global reach power of rasputin all amazing build around those having at least one pair of charge of the light mods will also go a long way taking charge is your go-to for building charges high energy fire or loose and blade on swords are great if you're feeling confident otherwise protective light will save your ass so many times unfortunately i haven't really found a lot of use for the season's new elemental well mods if you've been playing around with them and you have a build that you like awesome try it make it work i just think there are a lot better options right now in the old stuff for the rest of your mod slots slot in ammo reserves ammo finders all the basic stuff there you definitely want concussive dampener and at least one other resist mod on your chest piece the only other major beat here is that you'll almost always want at least one person running special finisher special finisher on your class item will keep your team stocked up in ammo the entire strike i say almost this time around because of a certain set of exotics that got a really nice buff the aeon exotics are nuts right now reload damage ability regen free special heavy finishers healing on supers actually insane definitely worth playing with all the strats i'm going to talk below are more of the tried and true stuff from the past few seasons but by all means experiment give them a go and make them work they give you some fun stuff with those so with that let's dive into all the different subclasses we will start with hunters hunters are going to want to run either bottom tree night stalker or the stasis revenant subclass both of these should always use gambler's dodge the stasis aspects and fragments are mostly up to you build around them whatever you want to use Bottom Tree Gunslinger can also work pretty well, but I really don't recommend this for beginners to GMs. If you're experienced, go for it. So if you're running Night nice Stalker, you have two big roles. Keep your team safe while you're moving through hallways and the arenas with smoke bombs. Keep your team invisible and tether the hell out of everything big. There's not much more to it. You're just the team safety net. Keep them visible and keep rooms clear. Night Stalker Hunter should run either Six Coyote for an exotic or even better, the new Omni Oculus chest piece. The point of both of these chest pieces in this content is the same. You want to have a smoke ready at all times. And both of these will get the job done. Omni Oculus will do it better, but Six Coyote with Gambler's Dots has always worked. Revenant Hunters, on the other hand, should really stick to Mask of Bacchus and run at least one arc weapon. They should cover the arc shields. If there are no arc shields in that strike, I really don't recommend running Revenant. With light shift active your dodge you gain 10 percent damage against slowed and frozen targets and an additional 10 percent arc damage buff these stack dust field grenades can shut down champions it's kind of buggy it's kind of weird but if they're stuck in a grenade they'll keep waking up and keep getting stunned keep waking up and getting stunned it's it's kind of janky but it works silence and squall is also great for air denial and clearing out rooms really nice for ad control and your role as a revenant hunter entirely is to keep enemies slowed keep dealing heavy damage and just clear out rooms definitely more aggressive than night stalker bottom tree gunslinger is definitely more advanced for this kind of content um the season's artifact mod for champions is arc whereas last season it was solar so unfortunately it's a little behind if you are running gunslinger try running Athers embrace it'll give you a knife unstoppable really nice why not give it a go celestial nighthawk always a staple high damage Instant melt champions, whatever you want to do. If you really want to run Gunslinger, run one of those. Arc Strider, unfortunately, has very little place in GMs. I, I'm sure some people have run it. I'm sure people make it work, but personally, I would not recommend it. For the most part, Warlock should be running either one of two subclasses, either Dawnblade Well or Stormcaller Chaos Reach. Unfortunately, Warlocks are just kind of in a weird spot right now. Not really a ton of room for creative endgame builds. Nova Bomb, not terrible. But considering we have overload arc grenades this season and chaos reach just charges up so fast it's definitely the weaker of the two nuke options if you are running well it's important to remember that you can still get one shot in a well in gms a sniper or a powerful melee will still take you out the point of running well in gms is not for tanking hits like that it is for survivability against massive ad groups and that is why you run phoenix protocol on the other hand if you're running chaos reach your role is simple you output a ton of damage quickly you are a nuke that is it but this season there have been no changes to the subclass but we still learned how devastating it really is in both sandboxes both pve and pvp in addition to the sheer nuke power of chaos reach 
you can just keep charging it up with geomags just keep getting it up more and more more lasers even more the artifact mods are insane for our classes we've already talked about earlier like both thunder crash and chaos reach benefit so much from these mods take your pick on running a healing or empowering rift i would vouch for healing for the extra safety but empowering has its uses finally um even with a nerf shade binder can work if only for dust field champion shutdowns but there are just better options shade binder is really not in a good spot and titan mains you are also going to have one of two options for grandmasters you're either going to want to run banner shield sentinel with ursa furiosa or thunder crash striker with a new curious of the falling star thunder crash and pve was practically unheard of before the season and now I'm seriously thinking it could be a very strong GM play when combined to other support classes. Ursa Titan, tried and true, absolutely busted. Put up your shield, you're gonna make orbs for your team by blocking incoming fire. And by the time you're done, you almost have your super back. You almost have another one. Your role is to keep the team supers charged and ready. Combine that with a Phoenix Well Warlock and you will get your super back constantly. You will both be having your supers up the entire strike. It's amazing, must have. Absolutely must have. Just be mindful of the loadout. You don't want to be the only one running one kind of champion type because when your shield is up, you are not going to be shooting. Thunder Crash Titan is going to be very similar to Chaos Reach, especially when you pair it with uh, Curious of the Falling Star. Literally everything from the Stormcaller section applies. Use the Arc Overload Nades. Use Volatile Conduction or Focusing Lens. Take your pick. You can deal some heavy damage and should be able to one-shot champions. And like, like when you're done, you can overshield. You can get back to safety. It's nuts. It is nutty. So the other Titan subclasses will be pretty rough in GMs. So I wouldn't really recommend them. You can give them a go. Behemoth would be actually more of a support class if you're going to run it. You want to run dust fields for champion shutdowns. And other than that, you have some pretty nice ad clear. But really not, a mu not much going on. And you can get a nice debuff with top tree solar's melee, but that's about it. You really want to run banner shield or thunder crash. Team composition is going to vary from strike to strike. You might have two hunters, you might have two warlocks, you might have one of each. The strategies will mostly play out the same. For the most part, I definitely prefer having one of each class. And your primary strat is going to be chaining supers. You want to chain your abilities, you want to get those ability regens up, you want to chain your supers. At the end of the day, you just want to play smart and play safe. So I've been talking your ears off already, so let's just wrap this up. I'm not going to be going into detail on each strike just yet mostly because we don't really know what the Grandmaster for each one will entail. We know what the Masters of a few of them look like. They're not too bad, but we'll see. Maybe when they come around, I'll put something, I'll put something else together. In the meantime, just grind your power, find a team, and start getting your builds ready. Just remember, in GMs, everything hurts. Play safe, play smart, play slow. You don't need to rush. You have 45 minutes. Good luck. So this is my first real attempt at YouTube content, aside from just uploading the old Twitch VODs. Definitely a little lengthy, but I hope you found it really helpful. As always, subscribing will go a long way. If you want to catch me running Grandmasters and other nonsense live, my stream is linked below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Good luck out there.